So most of you guys are well aware of the new addition MDLR has on this channel. And that new addition is a new micro skiv made by Hayari Marine. And more specifically, that micro skiv is called the H skiv. It generated a lot of buzz because Mark has a pretty big following on YouTube, 40,000 plus. If you don't know what Mark's channel is, MDLR Fishing, there's a direct link in the description do, box yeah. below. He's produced a lot of content on this H skiv and I would, I would imagine that a lot of you guys that watch him probably got curious to, to the extent that you probably went to Google and looked up Hayari Marine and H skiff, you Google that. And probably a handful of you guys also, I'm, I'm willing to bet, has probably bought an H skiff because of Mark's influence. So today I'm gonna to give you my honest feedback on my experience with this new platform that Mark has on his channel. I got the chance to fish with Mark on this, on his new H skiff. We, we traveled many, many miles. We spent around close to seven hours on this platform. I got to see the extent of what this platform is all about. And I feel like my experience holds some weight because I do have some experience with micro skiffs. If you guys know, I've also owned a boat rover in the past. I've had that boat rover for at least eight months, had some really good experiences with it, grinded my teeth because that was my first, first um, micro skiff or mini skiff, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever owned. I learned a lot, uh, a lot of lessons about, you know, this type of flat platform. So I, I, I kind of have an idea of what the H skiff was about when Mark got it on his channel. I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of this H skiff. And while I'm talking about the pros and cons, I'm going to be inserting some B-rolls of this particular day that we went fishing, you know, trying to show you through a video example of the things I'm talking about. And hopefully it'll give you a good idea about what this H skiff is about. And towards the end or at the end, I will tell you my honest, honest assessment of what I think, in my opinion, about this H skiff and whether if it's a good value or it's whether it's something that you need to pursue or it's a game changer, whatever the case may be, I'll give you all that at the end. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the cons. Some basic specifications before we actually dive into the heart of the video. It is 13 feet long. Its width or beam is 45 inches wide. The whole hull is made of fiberglass. Engine max power is 15 horsepower according to their website, but I think their website is out of date because Mark is running 20 horsepower with no issues at all. It's pretty smooth with 20 horsepower. Person capacity is two, and it's made in Abu Dhabi. Okay, my first complaint about this h skiff is the person capacity of two. Now, in fairness, Hayari Marine designed this h skiff to be more efficient, or most efficient, rather, with just one person. Having two people on this h skiff, it doesn't really work as well. It doesn't get as skinny, it doesn't get on plane as fast, or you need more, you know, more depth of water to get on plane. So if you're looking for a, a skiff to have to, so you can carry one more person besides you, I highly wouldn't recommend a skiff like this because it doesn't work that way. H, the H skiff was designed for one person. So I think that's a con. But on the flip side, if you're looking for just a one person capacity micro skiff, then the H skiff is, it's, it's, it, does, it's, it does a really good job at doing that. So let's talk about drafting real fast. When you have two people on board uh, on this particular day, when I was fishing with Mark, you know, we're two big guys. I'm 220 pounds. Mark himself, I believe is 170, 180 ish pound with our, all our gear together. We're pretty much almost maxed out on the weight limit of the H skiff. At least one foot of water to like really operate it. One person, I can probably what, eight operate inches? it just fine in three feet because the trolling motor can come up a little bit all the way so before it starts hitting the hull, I just, I don't think it's a legit two person platform. You can do it though, platform, so that me and my son can have a much more pleasant and stable experience out here. And unfortunately we weren't able to draft as skinny as I thought we would. We went into the back lakes as you see in this video here and we got we stuck some few times and honestly when i was looking down at the depth of the water i was thinking to myself man i could i could i can easily draft this skinny water in my autopilot or on on my outback no problems at all but then again you know that's not fair to compare a kayak to this h skiff because h skiff is a 100 percent designed micro skiff where a kayak is a kayak honestly i was very disappointed when i saw that this h skiff with two guys and their equipment 
can't draft skinnier than eight inches because the reason why I was, I was very disappointed is because if you look at the other skiff companies out in Florida, for example, Ancona, Saltmarsh, Chittum, uh, I can go on and on. There's tons of um, technical polling micro skiff companies out in Florida. You can look at their website and they say you can fit three people full load and you can draft in eight inches of water and their boats are much bigger and heavier. So yeah, that was a little bit disappointing. Now to be fair, Mark did tell me that if he was by himself, he can draft in up to six inches of water and that's more acceptable in my opinion. Another con that I found quite annoying is the ability to get onto plane when you have two people. You need at least a foot and a half of water in order to get on plane from a dead stop when you have two guys with all their equipment on that little H skiff. Once again, to me, that's very disappointing because if you look at all the other all right, Florida skiff the companies, they say on their website, they can get on plane in inches of water. They don't say foots of water, they say inches of water with three people and a full load. So that was a little bit disappointing. But then again, you know, this, this H skiff is, does not have a tunnel hole. And a lot of those other skiffs do have a tunnel hole, so therefore they could get on plane in inches of water. Another thing that annoyed me, another con, is your ability to cast if you're the person sitting in front. So I had to really adjust my cast because if I was going to cast full with a lot of torque and whip to get my lure out because oh, I use really no, light, no. really finesse lures, and if I do that the way I do it on my kayak, I would hit Mark in the face or it would get caught up with something back there. I mean, that right there tells you that this skiff was not really designed for two people unless you're looking for just a plain old joy ride for miles on in without any fishing. So I had to adjust my cast a little bit. I lost some distance. Uh, that was a little bit annoying in my opinion, but once again, that shows me that this H skiff was, a, was not designed for two people. Once again, it was designed for one person. If Mark was by himself fishing, he can whip his uh, rod around any way he likes. He can torque it, he can overhand it. Um, you know, backhand it, whatever the case may be, because there's no one or no obstacle in front or behind him to do it. Another con that I want to talk about is fiberglass and oyster. And our waters are littered with oyster beds. I'm talking about hundreds of tons, tons and tons and tons, thousands of tons of oysters that can do damage to fiberglass. I mean, if you run that micro skip onto an oyster bed, ooh, that's going to be an expensive expensive crack scratch hole whatever you whatever you want to call it it's, it's not going to be pretty and i can see it in mark and i can hear it in his Oyster voice right here. when we were traveling and visiting this new spot way out here and right here. uh in our area like there's a, a lot of oyster beds that we didn't even know there's a lot of big branches out in the middle of the water in the channel and uh you can tell i could i could tell yeah, this day that he was you know very anxious very worried so about hitting way. that oyster and then when we were trying to travel through yeah this small little channel to get to the backpack lakes. He did run people. into some oyster and it did kind of upset him and, you know, kind of no, put him out of his element. And, you know, I mean, he kind of swallowed it and said, well, it was bound to happen anyways. But yeah, fiberglass and oyster in our area, to me, that's a con, it does not mix. Another con that I noticed is that this boat is very bumpy with even the slightest swell. So as you see in this video, this is when we're heading back home, the wind picked up and it was going across our face and it really picked up the swells, not to a point where they're like huge swells, I mean, like you see out in the middle of the ocean, but there were some swells out there, I would say maybe about six, eight inches of swells and the boat was, you know, doing this bouncy thing and it, you can tell this boat is not made for handling big, big swells, especially when you have two people and you're, you're pretty much at its weight capacity. Now, if you're by yourself, I mean, it might handle it a little better, but still, the, the, the whole design, how small it is, how narrow and how short it is, I mean, it's, it's really not designed for big waters, big swells. But on the flip side, once again, Mark bought this to fish the small waters, bays, ponds, lakes, um, bayous, stuff like that. So yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't see it as a big, big con because you know he's, he's using his boat to help him fish the type of fishing he likes to do. The last con I want to talk about is expense. Now this is not a cheap, cheap boat and I don't know if Mark's mentioned it, but I will mention, I'm going to be honest with you guys, be transparent. This boat is super, super expensive and Mark's boat is not even fully loaded and he spent close to $14,000 on this boat. Now when you call Hayari Marine and you customize it the way you want to customize it, perhaps there's going to be some items that you don't want or you're going to delete or maybe add. The price is going to be different for everyone else, but the way Mark has it, the way you see it exactly 
on his channel that cost him around fourteen thousand dollars and yeah that's ex very expensive and you know honestly price and budget is very subjective to every person everyone is different everyone lives on a different umbrella of budget just like mark felt like you know this boat was worth it in his opinion all in all in general fourteen thousand dollars for a micro or a very mini micro skiff like the h skiff yeah honestly that that's pretty expensive all right now that we talked about the cons let's talk about the pros first pro is that it's very small and compact 13 foot long 45 inches wide and does not weigh more than 400 pounds empty weight it is a micro machine, a micro skiff, true to its nature. There's not any other skiff company out there that's going to compare besides perhaps maybe this Canoe, uh, I believe is another like hybrid micro kayak type platform. Uh, I think Ancona or Salt Marsh um, has a model that's 14 and a half feet long. So, I mean, there are a couple of models out there that can compare to the H skiff, but all in all, H skiff is it's micro, it is very small very light very agile and i feel like that's a pro especially if you're trying to fish the type of waters that we have on the upper texas coast another pro i want to talk about guys is its stableness i mean this micro skiff i was completely blown away on how this is, stable you, this micro skiff was when i rode it with mark i mean it was another. smooth i, balance, I never ever throughout this whole six seven hours that we fished felt like i was going to fall over or felt tipsy at all very very stable i was able to stand up sit down you know, lean right, lean left. I was able to go up front on my knees and easily balance and that's deploy like his that. trolling motor without any issues because that's not automatic. You have to pull it and really push it down. And someone needs to do that up front. So very, very stable, very, very surprised because honestly, I felt like I was, it was gonna be tipsy. But once again, guys, you have to understand that I do have a lot of experience with kayaking. I'm able to stand up on all my kayaks. I'm very used to, you know, the stability of a small watercraft. Now, if you've never ridden on a kayak and you just, for the first time ever, gone on a small craft like on an h skiff, it might feel a little tipsy to you until you get used to it. But overall, now, if you have some experience, the h skiff seems like it's a solid, stable platform. Now, let's talk about how smooth the h skiff is, which is another pro. I mean, when we were riding to our first spot and we were cruising with 20 plus miles per hour, it was smooth. It was not loud. There was no hole slap. I never got wet at all, even though I was in the front, but you do feel the bumps if the swells do grow a little bit bigger. Uh, as I stated earlier, it's not stable for big water, big swells. Very smooth when we went out first first thing in the morning and that really caught my attention. I was like, man, this your, your micro skip is very smooth. I even told him that, as you I see on the video, I mean, we were just cruising skip. and cruising, really no smooth. problems at all. I felt really comfortable. Since this micro skip is very lightweight, it's very compact, it's very small, you can bet it's very agile. It's like a go-kart almost to a sense. When you have that 20 horsepower in the back and you really throttle it, you can really see that we, and this in this part of this video, you can see that we were just really going around the channels, around the bends with no problems at all. Easily, easily able to turn left or right with just a twitch of the tiller. I mean, this thing is so agile. I was very impressed with the athletic ability of this little micro skiff. Now, I did complain that it, we weren't able to draft as skinny as I wanted to draft with two people on it. But when we were in waters that were able to draft, which is more than eight inches, it was very quiet. And that's another pro. You have to be quiet in order to search for these redfish in the shallow waters. And this thing was deadly quiet, just like my kayak. Very impressive to a point where, I mean, it was so quiet, I kind of forgot that he was push-pulling back there. The last pro that I want to talk about is this micro skip is fully customizable the way you want it, the way you want to fish. Uh, that's one thing I really do appreciate with these boat companies that come out with great products. They're going to make it where it's customizable with all these different options to help you better yourself on the water, help you to catch more fish, enjoy the day on the water, and high Island Marine is no exception. I mean, you're able to do so many different options. I mean, I'm not even going to name them, but if you go to HayariMarine.com, they list all their options. There's so many things you can do. Unfortunately, you can't add a tunnel hole. That's one thing I wish you can add, but unfortunately, you can't add a tunnel hole. Now that you heard the pros and cons about the h -skiff, let me give you my honest feedback and assessment and whether I would get a micro skiff like this. And honestly, the answer is going to be no. I honestly feel, in my opinion, that this h -skiff does not fit the bill of the type of fishing that I want to do. I want a platform that's going to fit more than two people comfortably and able to 
draft better than HGIF. And like I said, I was really disappointed to find out that two people on this HGIF, you know, you need eight inches or more water, plus you need a foot and a half of depth to really get on plane. So it's not going to be built for, you know, the type of fishing I want to do. Now for Mark, it's different. He Sometimes he likes to fish by himself. And, you know, those are adequate numbers that satisfy him and the type of fishing he likes to do. But for me, it's, you know, it's a no-go. I just don't, I, I was a little bit disappointed about the numbers. And I know a majority of the time I fish by myself. There we go. But there are going to be many times that I would want to fish with my wife or bring my kids out. And having a, 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 you know, having a boat that's able to fit comfortably more than two people once again is a priority. I want to make sure you guys know that I'm not bashing this ish gift at all. I'm just giving you my honest feedback and experience from this day. Now, take it with a grain of salt because it was only one day, only six, seven hours I spent with Mark on this ish gift. All right, guys, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of long, but I really want to share my thoughts and opinions about this ish gift. Once again, I'm not trying to bash it. I love my boy MDLR. He's he's one of my close friends. Uh, he enjoys his H gift, and you know, honestly, that's you know, that's the most important thing. Is if you purchase something, are you going to enjoy it? And rightfully so. He absolutely loves that thing. He he, he doesn't stop talking about it. And if we talk about the H gift, he can go on and on for hours. Bottom line, you got to find what's best suited for you. And for me, for me personally, once again, the H gift is a no go. So I would not be purchasing one or I would not be recommending one to anyone based on my experience. Now, your mileage may vary once again, so do your research and all that good stuff. Thank you guys for making it all the way through. If you did make it all the way through, why don't you hit that subscribe button because you are one of my hardcore viewers and if you haven't subscribed yet, well, what are you waiting for, right? Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this HGIF. Do you think it was a good buy? Do you think it was a bad buy? Do you think there's better platforms out there? What other platforms do you think are better for the money? Let me read it and hear your thoughts. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. I love every single one of you guys. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.